Yeah. All right, so this is the phase change memory, and uh, this is outline. So first, uh, we will discuss some history of phase change material. And the phase change material is mostly based on this charcogenite material. So these charcogenes are the elements in the group six, except the oxygen. Okay, let's say the if it's the sulfide, selenide, tannerite, so those are charcogenite. And uh, actually, it's already been used in your daily life. Uh, for example, the, like your DVD or your CD. Actually, if you look at your CD, it's made of this uh, phase change material. It's the same material. Uh, for example, the typical one is this GST-225, and uh, you have already used it in the DVD or CD. So the principle, as we discussed, is based on the phase transition between the crystalline to the amorphous by the heating, uh, by, by the heat, and then melt and the quench process. So the crystalline is lower resistance, and the amorphous is higher resistance. So to trigger this kind of transition, in the CD or DVD, you use the optical way to trigger the transition. Basically, it's a laser, right? So when you use DVD or CD, basically you send the laser to the pixel of that CD disk. So for example, here, uh, Initially, the device is in the crystalline phase, lower resistance, and then you sh uh, shine the laser. Then, basically, you apply heat to the material, and if you quickly remove the laser, then the device temperature initially above the melting temperature, and you quench it, so the device will go to the amorphous state. And then, if you want to read, so this is also optical to read. So because the material with the, let's say, crystalline and amorphous state will have different uh, uh, this uh, refractive index. So you can look at the uh, uh, reflection of your light and you can tell it's zero or one. And so it's all optical way to tune the uh, uh, reflection or read the reflection by the optical way. So that's the CD and DVD. Uh, and then if you want to make the device from the amorphous to the crystalline, so you have to uh, apply, a, let's say, lower amplitude of the uh, laser, and then it will gradually heat the sample and then will crystallize the sample. So this is the way to do the optical tuning of the phase change material. No matter optically or electrically, Essentially, what is the changing the materials, the temperature? Uh, so if the material uh, is baked, then the resistivity will gradually decrease from the amorphous to the crystalline state. Uh, but if you heat it and then remove the heat very quickly by quench process, then it will go back from the crystalline to the amorphous. So phase change memory essentially is an electrical version of that uh, CD or DVD uh, because here you, you use electrical pulse to program and, and then you use small voltage to read. So it's done in electrical domain. Basically the voltage or the current pulse is going to apply the dual heating to the sample, to heat it up and then you go through this quench process. So that's the principle of the phase change memory. It's not new, it's the same as your CD or DVD. And this is the typical structure of the phase change memory cell. And uh, it's a two-terminal device. So you have top electrode, bottom electrode. This typically is a contact wire between metal, metal layers, and then you deposit the phase change material uh, as a thin film, typically tens of nanometers thick. And then this is the active region, because later when you apply voltage, the current will 
flow or concentrate along this uh, plug. So then the heat will generate here, and then this is the active region of the device. And this is also called the mushroom cell, because it's like a mushroom. And uh, here, let's go through some of the process. Uh, first, let's look at the uh, reset process. So, what you want to do is to apply, so reset uh, process. That means initially the device is in the crystalline state. That means no resistance. And then you apply a large current to the device. So those are the current flow. And then due to the dual heating, you are going to increase the temperature of the device above the melting temperature. Of course, depending on the current uh, uh, amplitude, you need to apply large current to heat it up. And then after a short period, you remove the pulse, current pulse, then the temperature will go down, and then you quench the device, and this part will become amorphous. So later, if you want to switch the device from the amorphous to the crystalline, that means set process. So you are going to apply smaller amplitude of the current, but longer time. So you create the temperature profile like this. So then this kind of temperature will help the material to recrystallize. So then you will create the crystalline phase again. So this is by tuning the amplitude of the current and also the time scale of the current to modulate the temperature profile like that to enable this switch back and forth between the crystalline and amorphous states. Uh, crunching is just using environment's temperature? Or uh, yeah, it just removes your pulse, the, the temperature will go down. Yes. And also, why do we need a resistor there? Can we just use an electrode directly contact with it? Yes. So this resistor is to, uh, yeah, you can, and uh, later we'll show that, but uh, this is a simple for fa fabrication, so you deposit the thin film blanket to the blank to the wafer, yeah. So we'll talk about the, uh, the, the more advanced cell. This is the basic cell. So we can go through some animations, so you can see this more, uh, you, uh, you can visualize this transition. So here, for example, this is reset. So you need to apply large current. And in this simulation, so this is 400 microamp. So the, temp uh, the current is here. And this is, uh, I think, the temperature map. Okay. So the current concentrated in this heater, this, no, uh, this contact. So this is a, a high temperature. And then you increase 500 microamp. And then you can see a 600 microamp. The temperature goes up, and then it, and this is at the peak, 800 microan. So you can see the temperature profile, and then you remove. Okay, here, very uh, quickly remove the current pulse. Then the region with the temperature higher than the melting temperature of the material, typically a few hundred degrees C then those regions will stay in the amorphous state. This is a high resonance state. So this is the, the reset. And then if you look at the set process, so you need to apply a lower amplitude current. Okay. So here, this is a, a current profile. You can see the current is uh, flowing. And then I think this also shows the amorphous region. This, uh, let's say the blue ones are the crystalline phase. And the kind of red is the uh, amorphous. But due to the current uh, percolation pass, so some of those amorphous region will be recrystallized to be the crystalline phase. So as you increase the current, and then keep it for, for some time. So basically, this material will sp spontaneously recrystallize. So 
this is as you continue, and then wait of enough time, then the device will recrystallize this part, and then you can have the low resonance state pass through this structure. So this is how you set the device. So you may wonder, the, let's say, why this could happen. So actually, if you look at the energy landscape for those two states, it's in this kind of barrier. If you think about this, is the energy. And uh, this is the reset state, or let's say amorphous state. This is the crystalline state. So the lowest level of the energy actually is in the crystalline state, because in that case, all the atoms are in their minimal energy location. They are in this regular arranged order. So that means the lowest energy state. So the system actually spontaneously wants to go to that lowest energy state, which is a crystalline state. So that's why when you give a little bit of heat like this, then the system, this, uh, uh, system tries to go to this crystalline state. The amorphous state is created because when you heat this crystalline state to a very high temperature above the melting temperature, then those atoms basically become kind of liquid right, uh, after melting. So they can move around, they move around like randomly. And if you quench, you remove the heat very quickly, then those atoms will remain those at those random locations. But those random location are not the minimal energy location. So, but it remain there because you re remove the uh, heat uh, uh, source. So that's the uh, the state here. This is the state here. Okay. So here, uh, the typical uh, programming condition like the. Uh, Reset. You need to have this quench. So typically, you need to remove your pul uh, pulse very quickly. Let's say less than ten nanoseconds, and the set lower amplitude, but you need longer time to recrystallize the, t uh, the, the 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 state. So here, for example, fifteen nanoseconds. And uh, here are some experimental data for the phase change memory cell. And uh, here you can see the reset curve. It's a black one, so here not, uh, nothing happened until you pass large current, like 500 micron n. After that, then if you quench, your resistance will go up. So for the uh, set curve, then you start with high resonance state and gradually increase the programming current so then it will spontaneously recrystallize, so the resistance will go down. But you cannot apply too large current. If you apply too large current, it will go back again because it's like reset. So you need to control the amplitude of the current and also the scale, or let's say the duration of the current to control the set or the reset. And here are some TEM images showing the different states here, for example here, here and here, so they have different resistance, and you can correspond that to the volume of this amorphous region. So, for example, if you compare those two states, so this one has larger resistance. If you look at the TM, the image under the microscope, then you can see all oh, this region is amorphous. And if you look at this data point, this resistance. So the amorphous region is only this, this one. So you can see that you can tune the volume of the amorphous region by controlling the programming current, and then you will get different level of the resistance. So this indicates you can use this method to do the multi-level cell. Right? So you can have different resistance for different levels. 
So this is the programming curve. And then this is a DC sweep IV characteristics. So if you use DC sweep, you can set it. Okay. So this is a current versus voltage. And then you can sweep the current and measure the voltage. So at this point, the set will happen. And then you can this kind of uh, IV. And then after the set, then you can sweep it again like this. Then you will get the IV curve at the low resonance state. So, but I would say that in the DC sweep, you can only do the set. You cannot do the reset. Why is that? Any idea? You can only do the set in DC sweep. You cannot do reset. Any idea? Because you can only increase voltage. Because reset, you need the quench process. You oh. need to remove the your voltage very quickly, like in the nano second. Uh, speed and DC sweep is very slow, so you cannot do that. Can you, can you just cut off the current and yeah. back DC power? In your typical measurement setup, you the, the DC pulse is, is not that responsive. Yeah, it's a very millisecond each voltage step. So the biggest challenge for the phase change memory is the current. We have seen some of the data there. You see, you need like 600 microamp to melt that material. So this is huge uh, power consumption. So we need to find a way to reduce the current, especially for the reset, right? You need to melt the material. So here, uh, the few methods to reduce the current. First of all, you can reduce the area of the contact. And uh, uh, this is, uh, as shown here, this is the contact area, which means the area of this region. And uh, you can see that uh, if you scale the contact area, then your current will linearly scale with that. But still, here, this is a 500 nanometer square. That is roughly, let's say, 20 nanometer by 20 nanometer, right? It's 400. So this is like a 20 nanometer by 20 nanometer. You see the current. Here is a million. OK, this is like what? This is like a, a 100 micron, right? Even at 20 nanometer by 20 nanometer node, the current is like 100 micron. It's pretty large. So a better way to do this is to do some thermal engineering of the cell structure. So first one, this uh, is the mushroom cell, as we discussed. And the, the heat is not confined. Okay. So because current flow here, then the heat also di dissipates here. So a better way is that if you can make a confined cell, so you have the GST material here, so current flow here, but then here this is insulator, for example silicon dioxide, it's not only electrically insulate, insulating, but also thermally they have very bad conductivity, thermal conductivity, so you can confine the heat. Uh, so you don't need to apply too large current uh, because the heat is confined, so you can achieve a uh, higher temperature, even with the same current. So this shows that with a structure B, which is this one, you can, at the same contact area, you can reduce the uh, current by like uh, two times. So this is uh, uh, an extreme case, and think made by Samsung, I guess. So if you can make this volume so small, if you can make this here, this volume, only like uh, uh, 7 nanometer and uh, 17 nanometer, and uh, here this is like maybe uh, another 15 nanometer or 20 nanometer. So if you can make your phase change memory volume to be this kind of small, then you can greatly reduce, reduce the current, because you only need to melt this volume.
And so here that some scientific study to look at the limit of the uh, switching current. So in this experiment, this group uh, cleverly uh, used a carbon nanotube as an electrode, and then they burn the gap in the carbon nanotube, and then deposit the GST in this region. So they use this carbon nanotube as a, the electrode, two electrode, and then the GST is locally heat up here. And the nanotube, you know the diameter is only like one or two nanometer, so it's, uh, you can think this area here is very small, the actual uh, volume. So if you do that, then they can get this uh, reset current. This one, you see the current is about five micron. And uh, the estimate contact area is about three nanometer. So this is another study with similar concept. Use carbon nanotube as an electrode to reduce the area. And in this study, it achieved like 1.4 micron. I think this is the record so far. Uh, the lowest uh, current you can reset the phase change memory. But the effective contact area is very small. So if you do this kind of extrapolation from the uh, literature data, so most of them, like uh, 100 micron, this is 100 micron to like one mini ion range. The, so the contact diameter is like uh, 20 nanometer to this 100 nanometer. So those are the data point here. So those are the typical data in the literature. So you can see it's uh, several hundred micron. It's pretty large. Because one transit, one T1R, that T can only give you probably 10 micron or 20 micron if the W over L is 1. So if you want to reduce that to the single digit micron here, you see the trend. You have to scale the phase change memory down to what? Like, you know, 5 nanometer. <laughs> By 5 nanometer. Which today's lithography cannot do for you. So today's lithography cannot do 5 nanometer by 5 nanometer. We talk about the 5 nanometer, 7 nanometer technology load, but as I discussed earlier in the course, there's no physical dimension like 5 nanometer in the 5 nanometer technology load. Right. So this is still quite challenging if you look at the, the phase change memory. So the Intel's Micron 3DX point, you can guess, right? So they are like 20 nanometer spatial size, so they're current should be around like 100 micron. Although they didn't disclose this, but you can get from here. So this is a key challenge for the phase change. And then phase change can do the multi-level cell, as we discussed. So the way is to control the programming condition to get different resistance levels. <coughs> and uh, you can tune the let's say the amplitude in the set process or tune the amplitude in the reset process or even the shape which means the quench uh, waveform you can uh, use this uh, let's say the, the, the falling edge and uh, the, the, the run rate to control the quench process and then you can achieve different states in, the, in this dynamic range and then each state corresponds to different size of this volume. Right. So this amorphous volume corresponds to different resistance states. And uh, here typically it's better to use the set process to control the multi-level state, state. So here we have four levels and this is achieved by gradual set. And then you can see they are uh, well uh, separated. Uh, but the, if you use the reset process, it's more difficult to control the quench process because uh, 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 it happens very fast and then it's very hard to control. So you see the variation is larger if you use this part to do the multi level cell. But no matter what, you need to do the write and the verify because you care about the tail bits here. 
So this is a write and verify protocol, as we discussed. You firstly program it and read it and compare to the target. If it does not meet your target, reprogram it. So if you do that, so for example, the distribution can be tightened. Those uh, open symbols as the initial uh, distribution. But after the verify, then you can make it uh, very s steep. So by doing so, you can even achieve like up to 16 levels of the cell. That means 4 bits per cell. And any questions? Then reliability issues. So for the normal time memory, we will care about the retention. And uh, again, as I said, so no matter which normal time memory, this kind of one over KT plot is uh, very generic. And uh, here you are going to test the uh, device at different temperature and look at the retention time at different temperature. And then you draw, you, you need to make a log scale for the time and then convert the temperature to 1 over kT and then draw, draw a straight line, extrapolate to the 10 year. And in this particular case, it's 110 degrees C for 10 year. And the slope gives you the activation energy. So you have this kind of a question in your homework. And the unique problem with the phase change memory is this resistance drift with time. So if you measure the resistance over time, it will gradually drift. And typical trend is that the resistance will go higher. And this is due to the relaxation of the amorphous phase. And the higher temperature will accelerate this kind of drift. So you will have this uh, problem, especially for the multi-level state, if the state drift over the let's say reference between those two states, then you will have an error. And another problem is this thermal crosstalk or disturb. This is also unique in the phase changing memory because you know phase changing memory we rely on the heat, right, to melt the material. So the temperature is very high locally. It's like a few hundred degrees C, 400 or 500 degrees C. So if you program one cell, for example, if you program this cell, that means this cell locally the temperature will be like 400, 500 degrees C, and that heat will dissipate to the neighboring cell. So this cell may be like a little bit lower temperature, maybe 200 C. And this 200 C is like a thermal stress to this device. Then this 200 C may disturb or change the state of the of this device. So for example, we can do a quick estimation here. For programming pulse, like 100 nanoseconds, okay. And uh, if you do 10 to power 9 cycles, that means in total you apply like 100 seconds of the thermal disturb time. So that means if you keep programming th this cell for 10 to power 9 cycles, so effectively it's like you apply 100 seconds thermal stress to this to here and the from the this kind of retention plot one over kt plot you will see that 100 seconds is here 